Shall I start? <laughs> awesome. All right. Um, I had a couple of questions for you. First, we'll start off with um, more technical kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Compared to Big Hero 6 and Zootopia, how much of a uh, tech leap was there for Moana? Uh, I think when you watch this movie, you'll see that it is uh, a visual effects smorgasbord. Uh, our effects guys really had their work cut out for them. Uh, between the ocean, which I, I can't imagine anything harder to animate than water, <laughs> let alone water that is a character. Right. Uh, we had wind. We had a rocking boat in a simulated ocean. We had blowing hair that was wet or dry. We had skin that was sometimes wet with tattoos moving on them. Uh, the the beautiful sunsets and and the sky. I, I think we we also uh, switched to a different rendering software. I believe maybe oh, really for this one or versus. Oh, you know what we we did that a, a couple movies ago. But you can definitely see the payoff right uh, in this. Uh, it was. It was fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen it? Yeah, we. Yes, I yeah. got to see it. Two I days haven't ago. even seen it. Yet. No, it was grand. I like, get to see it tomorrow night. <laughs> I'm so excited. No, it was, I, I really liked how you, when you had the moments of the skin and the tattoos talking, it was just like really, in, like, wow, you really went to those really deep levels to make it look like real skin. Like, yeah, it, that it, looks really good. The detail and uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it, it crushes me every time I watch uh, the, the high res images. It's just uh, every every time we we can see the shots as they come through, yeah. and everybody's looking to see how their shot looked, and you know we'll email each other. Have you seen this shot? Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Well, you worked on Maui, correct? I did a lot of Maui okay. shots. I think most of my animation that I did in this movie was with Maui. Okay. And uh, that was a blast. He's such a character, just a rascal. Right. And uh, I got to do a sequence, uh, kind of a, a physical bit, where uh, he is like, you know what, I'm out of here. And he jumps off the boat, and the ocean pulls him back and throws him back on the boat and then spits in his face. <laughs> uh, that was so much fun to do. Uh, and it was funny because... I did a shot in Tangled where Flynn goes, oh, come on! And in this uh, sequence, he gets thrown on the boat and he goes, come on! <laughs> so I think I'm going to get every <laughs> oh, come come on. On shot. Yeah. It's not a bad so, shot to get. No. <laughs> um, do you work with Eric Goldberg? Because I know that they said that he worked a lot on the tattoo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we really work with... Uh, those hand-drawn craftsmen every step of the way, yeah. uh, from character design to um, uh, animation tests that we uh, do to uh, draw overs over our work, like push this and know we should be more uh, uh, this way. And uh, it, it, it's the feedback from that legacy uh, is just uh, invaluable. Right. So, yeah, it's... Yeah. Uh, and he's such a character and, and <laughs> such a great uh, a wealth of animation knowledge that uh, if you get him talking about animation stories, you just sit there like this. <laughs> All right. Oh, so For sure. Yeah. yeah. So Moana is almost entirely CG animated with exception to Maui's tattoos. Mm -hmm. Was it easy blending two completely different animation styles so seamlessly? We did a lot of tests. We did a lot of tests to make sure that that seamlessness happened. Um, and we, the tattoos are very cartoony, and so that kind of helped make our, helped our characters to be a little yeah. bit more stylized in their performances and, and design. Um, we don't want to make anything Realistic. Right. We want to make it believable, mm -hmm. and so there's a lot of tests that happen. From you know, do the tattoos on Maui look good with Maui in the environment that he's in, and that kind of research and testing uh, really pays off in the end. So that you don't, you're not sitting there thinking mm, that character <laughs> doesn't fit in that environment, or why does he have. Uh, cartoony tattoos on a realistic, you know, 
so we do tons of, of testing and uh, there's a lot of eyes on it all at every step of the way and we get great collaboration from all sorts of artists. That's my mom. <laughs> So what I was curious about is, uh, we touched on it there, I, wanted, I was curious about how much of it starts with freehand before it goes toward the computer animation, but I'm also very curious about the research, because in the credits it, you know, it mentioned Fiji and all of that, yeah. and I'm curious, how far back did the prep go, and the revi you know, what, how many revisions basically did things come before you settled on this is the look, this is the thing we're going to? Sure, sure. Um, uh well, I'm sorry, what was the first part? Uh, uh, how much of it started is, you know, how far into the process does it go freehand oh, right, before right, the right. computer part comes um, in? The, the hand-drawn stuff is like the very first step. Uh, we definitely get designs from uh, graphic artists, uh, and we want, we want these to be characters. We don't want them to be mannequins. We don't want, we want them to have a, an appealing... Uh, not, I don't want to say cartoony, but uh, character look to them and get all the expression and stuff that we used to get in the, the hand-drawn uh, traditional animation days. Uh, and we have artists push all those expressions, and then when we model a character and rig it for uh, facial expressions and body motion, we try to achieve all those dynamic graphic elements from the drawings and there's very much a back and forth we'll we'll do tests and they'll be like no nope, no nope, the shoulder doesn't do that uh, in my drawing it kind of would do this to get that graphic uh, we're very uh, collaborative with with our artists uh, I'm not saying I'm not an artist but uh, you know uh, <laughs> and uh, I would say that uh, when Ron and John were talking about doing this movie uh, Lasseter you know, he's a huge research, like, get to know what you're talking about. S made them go to the Pacific Islands. Made them. Like, Such a... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do we have to? And uh, they just uh, were so inspired with that trip that they went, uh, that they were like, the movie that we were going to make... I don't think we need to make that. Well, let's, let's. It inspired them to make a whole uh, different story, I think, and and talking to the people there and listening to their stories and uh, their input uh, and their perspective of the ocean and uh, the land and and just that culture uh, just fundamentally changed them as filmmakers. I think. And uh, they developed such a, uh, a relationship with um, what we called the Oceanic Story Trust. They were like archaeologists. Uh, um, uh, I keep messing up that word. Um, not archaeologists. Anthropologists. Anthropologists. I, I've been around here I'm going to write that on my arm. To be in his head, because at first yeah. it's like... <laughs> I know it starts with an A. Anthropologists, fishermen, elders, dancers, uh, in that area that whenever we would uh, come up with a version of the story or designs, they would get feedback and blessings from this uh, this trust and uh, it it definitely shaped the way we told this story so you've been congratulations on 20 years with the company Thank you. <laughs> that's pretty awesome um, but you've been able to work with so many different directors over the years what was your major takeaway with working with Ron and John oh let's see um, we had so much fun in dailies their interaction together, it's like an old married couple where <laughs> they will talk over each other and then agree at the end. Yeah. Like, or they will fight and then uh, come away with some kind of consensus. It was, it was an incredible process to watch and they are so good at making sure that this is about the story and how this fits into the arc mm -hmm. of the story. I don't know how they do it, 
but their their level of um, the way they keep track of the story and throw in bits that make it so entertaining along the way, I it's a, it's a powerhouse. It's no wonder they're responsible for these classics that mm-hmm. we've. Uh, uh, I I hope to do it again <laughs> because uh, just just being around them is so much fun. We had so many laughs and dailies. It's it makes it a good time. Was there any other takeaway that you got from the whole crew in general? Um, I'm trying to think. I don't know at this point. It's okay to say I don't know. Get back uh, to okay. me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were just very, um, like I said, it was a challenge. Uh, we, we all kind of pulled, pulled together, and uh, uh, I, I don't know. It's, that's a hard question to answer. I don't know. I know it's in there somewhere. I just can't think of it. Okay. <laughs> now, how did Dwayne Johnson influence Maui's design? <laughs> Um, the, uh, oh, the man's eyebrows, of course. <laughs> oh, uh, we, uh, we, and, and that smile that he's yeah. just so full of charm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, were you at D23? This last year, no. No. When he. But I did see a lot of the fil- film clips from it. <laughs> when Ron and John were like, we needed somebody who was really, and then he's in the back going, handsome <laughs> the crowd just went nuts he is so full of charm and you know he knows he's a handsome man and if I don't know if you follow him or at all but he is so humble too oh, yeah. mm-hmm. like he is one of the most grateful humble uh, men who appear to be full of themselves <laughs> and so uh, impressed with his body you know I he <laughs> He brought, he brought so much t- uh, to this character with the, the cocky attitude, the bigger-than-life kind of personality, and he was... I, I can't think of anybody better to voice this character. Uh-huh. And when, when he started seeing animation that we were doing with his voice, I think that uh, prodded him to make it even bigger... I mean, he was like, oh, now I know who Maui is. Mm -hmm. And that kind of, uh, that cyclical uh, uh, give and take, uh, it was really, it was a treat Mm -hmm. to animate with his voice, so. Okay, Gary, you'll have the last question. Okay, so, since music's such a big part of the film, and many of the films, I'm curious about at what point in the animation process do you have access to the song because there's obviously a timing and a beat to the music sure. that the animation has to match up to and that right. and their movements that must be extremely tricky. Oh yeah, uh, the the songs are usually tent poles in the story. I mean, we we know that um, this song will go here and this song will go here and and they record the the lyrics um, before we start animating. The song is probably and usually in a demo mode at that point. The full orchestration isn't uh, there, but we have the beat, and we have the um, some of the accents, and uh, the musical accents, and then we have the uh, the lyrics, and those lyrics are solid, uh, and we we animate that, and then when we see it in final, it's this incredible. Uh, instrumentation that they uh, that they do usually after after the sequence is done. Uh, but every year when they're scoring the film, we the, we get a live feed from the orchestration to the studio, and it's just so much fun to watch how this group of people um, kind of speak in this shorthand. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've been doing it for years, and they're like. Uh, yeah, French horns. I need that little bu- bu- da- 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 at this part. You know what I'm talking about, right? And they're like, yep. Yeah. You know, when do we do lunch? <laughs> and it's just so interesting to see those that that part of the process because uh, it's totally foreign to to animators how they do that. So, uh, what did you think of the movie? Oh, oh it's amazing. Because oh, I'm going to ask you guys a couple questions. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, do you think you would want to see it again? Oh, I mean, yeah. Oh, good. Yes. And by the soundtrack. Yes. Oh, yeah, uh, no, the yeah. soundtrack is really good. There's some songs in there that, for me, like, the da 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 call me, that yeah, song, yeah, yeah, yeah. it one's, like, at first it was, like, at first, so I, I like I had a hard time remem- like recalling that because the "You're Welcome" song just is nope. so sure, yes. catchy. like it's catchy, catchy yeah. out of this world, catchy. But like over the last couple days, I've woken up singing that yeah. song. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it, it's one of those that kind of like it just roots itself into you. Oh, and it and it you can hear her singing it from her heart. She does a great job. And it, I tweeted when when they were playing it over and over again in the screening room uh, near us, I tweeted, "It's this is uh, great to be working and hear the next Let It Go in mm-hmm. in the next room. Because, yeah, I, I, I can't wait. It's so inspiring. It's such a great... I was uh, very impressed with that. When you say you job. tweeted it, do you mean that you actually tweeted it on Twitter, or do you mean that you wrote it down? <laughs> <laughs> the bird. Yeah, more modern tweeting. That was more funny. <laughs> that was funny. The, the people were laughing so hard yesterday at the, the colleges that I did. Oh uh, they were laughing so hard at the beak going, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that they missed the tweet. Uh, that was funny. That was, that was fun. <laughs> when you write with the bird, it's called the tweet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, that, that bird just was... Uh, really came to life when we dumbed it down. Oh, yeah. Now, is yeah. it true that the design of uh, the chicken was inspired by John Musker? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know anything about that, but, uh, and I will say, I don't, I don't see that at all. <laughs> um, but, yeah, just making that bird an idiot really changed the entire uh, uh, dynamic <laughs> on that boat. Uh, it was interesting. For sure. 